hey, what's up, guys? What is capitalism? That's the question I will be answering in this video. The reason why I made this video is uh, because I just uh, did not see YouTube videos which get to the essence of what capitalism is. And I just wanted to make a video which is going to be you know, concise, informative, and to the point, and really uh, get to the essence of this question, you know, what is capitalism? So, what does the word, you know, capitalism means? Um, interesting question, and I don't think you know the answer. You know, what does the word mean? Like, what is the origin of the word capitalism? Uh, you might think it means uh, sort of, capitalism like capital city so it's kind of like uh, once we got to the historical stage in which you know we have nation states with capital cities you know that's what capitalism is it's sort of um, you know we have a nation state with a capital city and you know capital city becomes this uh, you know center of trade and commerce and uh, all this stuff but that's incorrect okay um, capitalism the word capitalism does not come from you know the word capital city okay that's not the case it comes from a Latin word caput which means head so in a sense uh, you know capitalism means you know head is and well of course uh, you kind of might have a question, well, heads of what? You know, human heads or... The way the, you know, word, uh, you know, caput was uh, used in Latin is uh, heads of herd animals, okay? So sheep, uh, cows, animals like that. So capitalism is, you can sort of uh, translate it as headism. So quantity of animals, like that's literally what the word means, you know, kind of headism, you know, number of heads. Well, um, that's the linguistic, you know, component of what capitaliz capitalism is. Well, where and when did it originate? And uh, that is a really interesting question. And it's actually a mystery. Okay, you see, we still do not have a clear answer to this question. Um, one of the greatest, uh, greatest uh, historians of, you know, capitalism, Fernand Brudel, um, you know, in his uh, three volume um, history of capitalism, says that we just do not know, like, uh, you know, we have an incredible number of statistics, you know, like we know, like in, you know, Paris in, you know, 1772, how many uh, you know, liters of milk, you know, people drank, you know, how many uh, loaves of bread, you know, they have consumed, like, we you know, how many, uh, you know, barrels of, you know, wheat, uh, you know, people had in, I don't know, Florence in 1472, but we just do not know exactly where and exactly when capitalism uh, came into existence. Uh, that's kind of a curious uh mystery you know behind it so we do not know where and when it exactly originates but essentially uh, you know in the decades right after you know Columbus's famous uh, you know discovery of America by the way I will make a separate video about uh, other cultures uh, you know discovering America but don't want to get into it so essentially uh, once America was discovered uh, by you know Europeans capitalism um, came into existence uh, somewhere in Western Europe okay and like I said we do not know exactly where and exactly when it came into existence but you know 16th century it was there all right <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> What is uh, capitalism sort of uh, socio-historically? Like, is it a religion? Is it an ideology? Uh, 
Is it uh, a philosophical system? Well, it's none of the above. Capitalism is a social system, all right? So what is a social system? Uh, a social system is essentially what gets taken away from you, which rules the economy of a uh, civilization. So for instance, what if you were a nice, you know, barbarian um, individual living in Gaul, which is, you know, today's France during Caesar's time, okay? So you are, um, you know, living with your, you know, little tribe in Gaul and Caesar comes and, you know, he uh, makes you a slave and, you know, he brings you back to Rome, okay? Well, what's going to happen to you after, okay? What's going to happen is your physical freedom will be taken away. So in ancient times, in sort of, um, you know, that which we call classical antiquity, you know, Rome and Greece, your freedom was taken away from you. So that's what slaveholding social system was all about. So ancient, you know, classical civilization had a slave holding society because freedom was taken away from people so essentially your body you know does not belong to you in a sense so that's what ancient slave slavery was all about like that's how their whole economic structure was uh built that's what it was based on and uh, by the way there is a really interesting book by William Golding, uh, I forgot what it's called. I think it was called the uh, Consul Extraordinaire. Uh, so you, you guys probably know this book, Lord of the Flies by William Golding. So the same author. So he essentially wrote a really interesting book. It's really small, like just like a hundred pages about how in ancient uh, Alexandria, you know, there was an opportunity uh, they already had uh, the essentially they had uh, engine discovered. Okay, uh, there was an incredible scientist named Hero of Alexandria. So he discovered uh, the steam engine. You know, two thousand years ago, like way, way before the Industrial Revolution. You know, before James Watt and you know Maxwell Faraday, all that stuff. So they had you know steam technology figured out back in ancient. Uh, Hellenistic world. Uh, so, you know, the question is, why was it not implemented? You know, why uh, wasn't, um, you know, steam technology used in ancient, uh, you know, Roman times? Um, it would have made uh, incredible, you know, improvements in how fast, you know, buildings were built. I mean, it would have been a crowd, but for some reason it failed. And you see the answer William Golding gives in this book is because of slavery. Okay. So in ancient times, the whole economic structure was based on taking away your freedom and making you a slave. I mean, that's how economy functioned. All right. So that's ancient, uh, ancient times uh what about after it uh well after it we got this famous uh sort of system which is known as feudalism okay i'm sure you heard this word uh it's really really controversial by the way like i mean most historians kind of agree that um uh, you know slavery was major component of uh you know sort of roman civilization greek civilization egyptian civilization but uh, feudalism, it's a really, really controversial, you know, concept. So uh, kind of, you know, be careful when you, you know, discuss it with uh, people, especially with those who, you know, major in history. But um, feudalism was uh, different from slavery. And of course, uh, yeah, like I'm sure, you know, like these, you know, peasants, you know, they were poor, they were, you know, miserable, but they... Uh, were not uh, like physically enslaved, okay? And you know, you might argue with this, but uh, 
they were not slaves in the sense in the same way that um you know people were slaves in rome and greece right so you know the question in the case of feudalism is well what was taken away because you know like i said social system gets defined by what gets taken away from you so what was taken away from you in feudalism and the answer is uh land was taken away like you know these barons and dukes and princes and uh marquis whatever these you know fancy titles um they owned the land and you had to work it so uh he did not physically own you as a slave right he owned the land and you had to work the land and you give him a part of your produce now life you know sucked for sure and like uh it arguably sucked more under feudalism than under uh, ancient slavery you know for uh you know people who were kind of you know the poor 90 percent you know not the elites but and under feudalism you know like i said land was taken away so that's the feudal social system and now we get to capitalism well what gets taken away from you in capitalism and of course you know once again you might you know kind of bring up an objection you know like uh well people were you know slaves and land was taken away but you see uh the thing that gets taken away from you in capitalism is not your physical body like it was in ancient world because actually you're free like you're physically free like the whole point of capitalism you know no matter how much you know the pay sucks is it's not forced it's it's free like you are you know making a decision you know even in you know england in you know 19th century which karl marx was you know horrified by and uh well you come to get a job at a factory you know which pays you peanuts but you come there as a free individual and you sign a contract you know with the factory management so you come there as a free individual and land uh, kind of is not the central uh factor either anymore okay what gets owned what gets you know taken away from the worker in capitalism is the so-called means of production you know that's karl marx's term you know which means the things you need to make a product in a factory so you know like those uh spinning looms uh you know conveyor belts you know all that good stuff you have in a factory you know which um, you use to make products so of course uh, you know now we kind of um, moved into this more uh, sort of IT electronics age and you know some of these uh, uh, restrictions not necessarily apply but you know to quickly summarize what I just said in ancient slaveholding uh, social system your freedom your physical body you know was taken away from you your freedom in feudalism land was taken away and in capitalism means of production are taken away so that's essentially the system in which we live right now capitalism it's a system in which you as a free individual come sell your time to make products which you know then get sold and those products are called commodities but um, you know we there is uh, another really really important uh, factor uh, in you know this discussion of capitalism and that is believe it or not religion okay uh, it, it's kind of uh, heretical i guess you know you could say to uh explain sort of you know economical phenomena with religion but 
uh, it absolutely like you, you cannot uh, understand what capitalism is without understanding religious uh, history of Europe um, in 16th and 17th centuries. So if you live in the West, I'm sure you know there is uh, this branch in, Catho in Christianity which is called Protestantism. So, you know, we have Catholic countries, you know, like, for instance, uh, Poland, France, uh, Spain. And then we have Protestant countries such as, uh, you know, Germany, Denmark, England. Well, England is kind of a special case. So this Protestant uh, religion actually was key to capitalism. Essentially, in 16th uh, century, new uh, Europe got split into two uh, religious uh, fractions, you know, two, so you can essentially describe them as Catholicism and anti-Catholicism. So the anti-Catholicism became known as Protestantism. And by the way, Protestantism was not the term that, you know, these uh, Protestants themselves used. It was kind of a pejorative. It was an insult um, to them um, by, uh, you know, the opposing camp, you know, kind of like the Big Bang. It's actually like, you know, the term Big Bang, um, it, it was kind of a joke, you know, like somebody wrote in a newspaper, you know, like, oh, you know, this theory of, you know, Big Bang and somehow it stuck, you know, so same thing with Protestantism, like, um, it, it was an insult, you know, they were just, um, essentially, some princes in Germany, they refused to uh, show respect to some, you know, Catholic, uh, you know, clergymen and, and stuff like that, and they refused to get up in the presence of um, religious figures who, you know, came from sort of Catholic domains, and they refused to acknowledge them, so, they were, you know, kind of described as protesting. So, you know, that's, you know, they protest and they're protest and Protestants. So anyways, um, Protestantism is capitalist religion. Okay, so without Protestantism, there would be no capitalism. So Protestantism gave a lot of these uh, sort of mindset, uh, you know, a lot of these ideas which are central to um, sort of capitalist mindset, they were uh, Protestant in origin. You know, like for instance, this concept uh, of, you know, working hard to get ahead in life. And uh, surprisingly, this, uh, you know, Catholics don't really think that way. Like, um, you know, this kind of individualistic, you know, like I got to get ahead in life, you know, like I got to push people aside, you know, I got to, you know, the world is, you know, small fish eats big fish. And like you yourself, like you probably, you know, without even knowing if you ever spoke this way, you know, like you said, like I got to get ahead, you know, I got to, you know, get to the top, you know, I got to make that money, I got to have that success. It's Protestant talk. It's, you know, capitalist talk, you know, I mean, you talk like a capitalist, uh, you know, congratulations, I guess. But um, <laughs> this Protestant religion, and by the way, if you are, you know, really, uh, you know, clueless about, you know, this, I will make a separate video about, you know, Protestantism and kind of get uh, more into it in detail. But Protestant countries became what is known as the core of capitalist system. So once capitalism came into existence, Europe split into two parts. You know, one part which we call the core, and that's um, a concept uh, coined by a great, great historian, um, Emmanuel Wallerstein. He just passed away, uh, you know, just uh, this year, I think. Uh, this year or two years, I forget. Uh, so he gave us this concept of, you know, core and periphery. So some countries, they were providing the raw resources for the core. So the core is that which 
sucks out the resources from the periphery. So, you know, let me give you an example. So if you live, uh, you know, in the U.S., okay, um, what does, you know, the U.S. import? Well, it imports a whole bunch of cheap resources, you know, like, uh, you know, wood from sort of those Latin American countries, you know, bananas from, you know, Mexico, kind of, you know, cheap stuff which you get in bulk. So that's what the core does. The core exploits the periphery in a sense. It um, uses periphery as a source of resources, all right? So resources come from the periphery to the core, you know, like grain from Poland um, in uh, sort of 16th, 17th centuries. And what does the core do for the periphery, okay? The core provides, uh, it makes uh, sort of high-tech stuff, okay? That's what it does. Like, it doesn't, uh, you know, let's say in, you know, 16th, 17th century, like, let's say, um, you know, England gets wine imported from uh, Portugal, and it did. And what does it give back to Portugal? Well, it gives it, you know, ships. It gives it, um, you know, machines for factories, uh, sort of, the core makes high tech stuff and in today's world uh, you know what is the core well it's you know japan it's germany it's the us so what do these countries do well they you know get a whole bunch of cheap resources from you know third world and that's what the third world is you know third third world equals peripheral world so it you know, gets these resources, and what do those uh, people in the third world get in return? Well, they get iPhones, you know, they get laptops, they get cars, you know, like if you look at, you know, Africa, they have cell phones, they have cars, you know, they have, um, you know, high-tech stuff. Well, they get it from the core. So that's uh, essentially, in a nutshell, what capitalism is, all right? So let me uh, recap, okay? Capitalism is a social system which came after feudalism. We do not know where and when exactly it came into existence, but we know it was somewhere sometime in the 16th century um, in Western Europe. This uh, uh, social system takes away the means of production, uh, and in feudalism, land was taken away, and in ancient slavery was freedom that was taken away and in capitalism means of production get taken away and that's the system in which we live this uh, socialist system was uh, very very uh, influenced by religious ideas like uh, religion was central to it protestant religion which split you know europe into capitalist core and its periphery and uh, I'll make a separate video about, well, what's going to happen now? Because, uh, you know, these social systems, they have a finite lifespan. So, you know, is capitalism coming to an end? Well, uh, stay tuned for my other videos. So that's pretty much it. So now, you know, when you watch the news, uh, you know, you can you know, have a better idea what they're you know, talking about when they say, you know, capitalism, this, capitalism, that. And... Uh, for those of you who read, and, you know, there is not a lot of people who read uh, these days, you know, I mean, we just, you know, got so used to, you know, YouTubes and, uh, you know, just all this other uh, stuff, which, you know, is not good for your mind. Well, for those of you who want to read, let me give you three um, best places to, you know, kind of learn more about this. Uh, of course, um, you know, there is this heavyweight philosopher Karl Marx. So he wrote a big fat book known as Das Kapital, you know, which is uh, translated as the capital, you know, it's like this big, more than a thousand pages, and there is uh, three volumes in it. So Marx's Kapital is, you know, one of the best. It's hard, but it's, you know, amazing stuff. And, uh, you know, if 
you find it a bit hard, uh, you know, I recommend it, um, you know, watching it in conjunction with uh, David Harvey's, uh, you know, videos on Marxist Capital. You know, he's a, a terrific English uh, historian, philosopher, uh, David Harvey. So Marx, that's, you know, number one. Number two, uh, Fernand Brodel, spelled B R A A. Damn it, sorry. B R A U D E L, Brodel, Fernand Brodel. So he wrote a three volume um, history of capitalism in Europe. Uh, pretty heavyweight uh, read, but, you know, very, very deep, uh, just incredible stuff. And third, Emmanuel Wallerstein, like he's the guy who gave us like most of these concepts about, you know, core periphery. And he advanced, uh, you know, kind of clarified some um, points in Brodel and Marx. And, uh, you know, sadly, you know, like I said, he just passed away uh, just recently. So, yeah, stay tuned uh, for, you know, more videos and uh, see you guys soon.